Coming back to other piece of evidences we didn't talk about, the flaprum. So the third man of the team had been studying that. He's a specialist in material resistance, and he has done some interesting theoretical studies and produced scientific papers on the study of the flaprum. To remember what is the flaprum, the flaprum is this piece of hardware here, which is a, a small piece in the line of the engine, not to stop the flux of the engine, a side with the outer berth flap. And you can see that when you land, they are moving and they are deploying. He studied specifically that one. Spend a lot of time to identify the material, the composite, which is actually owned and secret by Boeing. But he found documentation to create an elastic flaprum model and to do some finite, ele uh, finite element studies to determine two things. The maximum stress the flaprum can sustain and a dynamic modeling of how the flaprum would break in the water, hurting the water under normal condition of a ditching when it was deployed. And when you look at the way it breaks here, so the result, and you look at the picture of the retrieved flaprum, you see that indeed it started with an unzip fracture along the fasteners. Fasteners are holes with rivets and they are stress concentrator. So like a zip, they fail first, they, they, they break first. And then after a certain time, a tearing movement upwards like the one you see here is happening. So which means that this study is of big interest. And on top of that, no specific bumps, breaks, were found in the leading edge of the flap rounds, leading to the hypothesis that it could not fall in a free fall. Based on that, what could be the scenario of the final touchdown? Well, actually, you remember the flap round and the outer berth flap was, were side to side on the wing. The idea is that during the ditching, remember the sea was not flat. It's not a swimming pool. It is with waves probably two meters height, which is a third of the diameter of the aircraft, which is not negligible. So approaching to the water, it's probable that the wing, the right wing tip, touched down first and bent the uh, wing, releasing after touching the water, releasing these two pieces. Thus, the scenario would be that the aircraft broke in three main parts and a released engine hurting the elevator at the rear, explaining the bumps of the found on the elevator. Coming back to the uh, list of uh, debris, I'm not going to list them all. What is important to note that they have been found a few years, months at least, after the crash. They were in the west part of the Indian Ocean. Because of the global gear of the ocean, they were found in, in, in Africa, but also in Madagascar, in La Réunion Island, Mauritius, and Rodriguez.